Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and bring you guys my Righteous or my 3.19 Righteous Fire League Star Inquisitor for the Lake of Calandra patch. Now, before I get started on this, my hair's flying into my mouth, uh, I want to go ahead and take a quick second to plug this, which is the uh, basically the Righteous Fire wiki for people looking for the EOB. It's going to be right here. You simply just copy this URL right here. Um, if you don't want to do that, you could just click it and copy the paste bin. Uh, I like keeping it here because it's a lot easier for me to organize. And I've just had issues with linking POB URLs in YouTube and then getting flagged by YouTube. Uh, furthermore, don't forget, if you guys have any questions uh, that are not answered, you can come look at the FAQ here, or you can actually search your questions or click your actual you know, question and it'll filter it. This is still a work in progress. It's not done yet. And then there is going to be a step-by-step -step crafting section located for this guide here. This is also 3.18 right now. I still have to work on everything, but the POB is ready. So don't worry about that part. All right. With that being said, let's jump right on into it. This POB is going to be a little different from last leagues. Um, I'm not going to talk about every single change as you guys can kind of go through that. Or if you guys have watched the previous videos on the RF changes part one and point or part two, they'll kind of explain it. So uh, I'm going to show you what I have to offer you guys. So step one, if you go to the skill section here and you drop down in here, you can see everything is sorted by your level. So level one to 12, if you click your skill located here, you can see all of the links. Uh, don't forget to read the additional info I've put here. A lot of people get confused on what gems to level. So to try to remedy that, I've put a little bit of text here. Um, so this go around, instead of using Wintertide, we're actually going to level with um, Armageddon brand slash rolling magma. Um, this is specifically because of the recipe you can craft for flat damage. A lot of people wanted me to try it. Uh, I didn't try it last league, so I tried it this league. Uh, or I guess you could say, you know, a test, and it was phenomenal. It's a little bit more work, but it's so much worth it because it, it it's so much faster. Um, so let me go ahead and kind of explain this. Now, remember that if you're in the level 1 to 12 set, don't forget that in your items, go to the level 1 to 12 set as well, and on your skill tree, make sure you match it with the level 1 to 12 set. Uh, this is important, especially when it comes to the aura reservation, to make sure you're not messing anything up. So uh, starting from the beginning, I've also added a little bit of text on some items just for people who want a little bit of extra help. So an example would be um, right here. This is a flat fire dispels, and this recipe will teach you everything on how to do it. All you have to do is check it out. So going through, we've got a 1 to 12, 12 to 28, 28 through 55, kind of going a little bit further. Um, I expect most people to kind of be around the 70 to 90 set. Not a lot of people are going to farm currency to go Aegis slash Aegis melding. A lot of people want it in a more expensive budget. So the 90 plus Aegis melding is not necessarily a league starter, but more so people who want to push higher numbers and know where to go with their currency or they get a lucky drop. This is kind of where you're going to look. Most people are going to be in this range, which is what I've kind of set the POB up for, right? So if we look here at the level 70 to 90 and over here 70 to 90 and our tree 70 to 90. <clears throat> so uh, I'm going to go ahead and break down and look at this. Also, special thanks to Rutu. I actually linked him the POB at this section. He gave me a little bit of tips, uh, mainly because I've been a little bit out of it. You know, I haven't played POE in a month, so he helped kind of thin it down and make it a little bit cheaper. All right, so um, Void Scepter. So a weapon like this can be a little bit daunting to acquire in the early game. However, what you can do is you can actually buy an item level four or item level, I think like 20, both of them work. I'd say go with a four to start. Uh, and you can actually use Harvest, Reforge, Fire, or potentially Fire Fossils. I haven't checked with Fire Fossils. And even though the item level is really low, you can still hit like 16% Fire Multi, and then you can have plus one Fire, because plus one Fire is item level four, and then you can actually just craft percent Fire damage, and this weapon is good for a very long time. So that is really sick. We're going to go with Dawnbreaker. Now, before I get started on this, remember that also on the right here, I have color-coded everything. So if you scroll down, in case you accidentally swap gear, things are color-coded for the sake of organization to make things easier. Over for the shield, I have basically put in a number of options for shields you can use. I think Dawnbreaker is going to be really good for the very high armor and the conversion. Uh, the conversion is going to help massively with like early physical damage. Also, the Scorch is really fantastic before you get Legacy of Fury, since these are going to be like one of your main chase items for chasing that juicy clear speed. Going over to the helmet, uh, if you guys are unaware, we use an Elder Crafted Helmet for our build. 
you want to get burn or conk on it but just simply throwing an essence of horror on any helmet just one still gets you that 30 percent more ellie which allows you to get started with your like pseudo links right for our chest piece this one may look a little daunting but it's really not that big of a deal instead of using essence of greed like last league we are using um, essence of loathing for mana reservation efficiency this is so we can kind of help alleviate the lack of mana reservation we have due to the changes. As for our gauntlets, it's very important to try to look for a high source of percentage increased regeneration. Um, previously in the past, I didn't bring a lot of attention to this, but gloves don't roll that high of flat value that can roll very high percentage increase. You also want to make sure you're getting fire exposure on your gloves which you can easily, well, maybe not easily, it's RNG, but you acquire with the Eater of Worlds influence, you know, kind of like when you're mapping and you see like the green little lightning and the Squidwards appear, you're going to be throwing those on your gloves so you get fire exposure. It is a massive damage to any fire base build. Legacy of Fury is going to be your first main chase item. Uh, it is the biggest source of clear speed you can get along with a really big single target increase if you don't have Scorch. If you can't afford these right away, as I'm going to, I'm going to imagine they're too expensive for most people, just at the beginning of the league, they're usually a few exalts, probably like the first and second day, and then they massively plummet in price because they're the most common drop from Maven. So after a few days to a week, you could probably expect these to be anywhere from 5 to 10 chaos, maybe 20 at the most. But again, until then, you can just use life res boots and you'll be totally fine. In fact, it'll make all your other gear cheaper because you won't be as res starved, right? As for your amulet, you want to try to get a dot multi or a plus one gems here. It's important to note the importance of an aggressive amulet when it comes to damage. Since Righteous Fire doesn't have the best damage curve and in general doesn't hit that high of numbers, you don't want to drop damage where you're able to get it. An amulet is a large part of that. Um, as for early anoints, you've got things like Arsonist. Um, you've got um, you've got stuff like, uh, where is it here? Ash, Frost, and Storm, which is good if you have the Maven Boots because it scales with Scorch. Rutu also brought up a good point with Master Sapper. I probably won't personally run this, but for players who are looking to squeeze more boss damage, this is really good because 30% increase for an Anoit's all right, but you do get 15% chance to get a Frenzy Charge, and that's pretty good for pinnacle bosses where you have longer fights, so you're potentially able to sustain them. When you're just like mapping, it's not that crazy, but for bossing, it's probably one of the strongest Anoit's if you don't have Frenzy Charges. And since we usually sustain Frenzy through Blood Rage, Blood Rage is not really an option for bossing or trying to get your charges, right? All right, uh, going through the rest, we've got two amethyst, well, basically two rings here. The importance of the rings is uh, this go around, we're actually dropping Purity of Elements a little earlier. Um, the reason why is we want to get Skitterbots out as soon as possible because previously we had extra levels on our Fire Trap. Now we lost like 20% damage on the Fire Trap. So dropping Purity of Elements and getting Skitterbots earlier uh, really helps make up that damage. When you do that though, because you drop period of elements, you will not be immune to shock. You need to get that reduced effect of shock. The Pantheon, you don't have, to, or sorry, the freeze, you don't have to worry about because if you read here, you'll need to change your Pantheon to Brine King when you do the swap. Moving on a little further, your Stygian Vice. Um, this one might look a little expensive, but the main reason is I want to bring the importance of using catalysts. So you can get a blank Stygian Vice item level, you know, 80 plus. You can throw your 20% Fertile Catalyst, so that's going to be four Catalysts when it's white, and then you're going to be using Harvest Reforge Life to try to get big values of life. Um, one important thing to note is this is a big part of your flat regeneration. Flat scales well with percentage, so you get big flat numbers on belt, and you get big uh, increase on your gloves to help kind of synergize. Um, there's also a new, not a new belt, but a buffed belt. Uh, which down over here i actually have a list of leveling uniques um so to talk about those leveling uniques immortal flesh is now like 250 to like 300 life regen or something this will be a really nice pickup for people who kind of are a little bit lazy with their gearing uh or just want a bulk of regeneration it's pretty solid other than that uh you've got an abyssal jewel heal you can get increased damage uh increased spell damage while holding a shield um, there's usually the Abyssal Jewel is going to be like life, res, maybe ES, an attribute. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty much just like quality of life. And then I've got one jewel socketed in to kind of show you guys what you're looking for. So this, for example, is 7% uh, fire multi in life. There's many, many, many different forms that you can get of jewels that like benefit you. Usually you're looking for multi, 
but high sources of increase are also good. Other than that, to, uh, to go to our flasks, so you can now only roll a max of three charges gain on hit, but that should still be good if you're face tanking. So I'm going with a Ruby, Amethyst, Quartz, Quicksilver, and Granite. If you have a um, phasing on kill Abyssal Jewel, you can actually swap the Quartz to maybe um, either a resistance flask that you need or potentially um, a source of onslaught. It really kind of depends on what you want here. You've got some flexibility. Also, if you have capped Chaos Res, you don't have to run an Amethyst, right? So since we're face tanking, we want to make sure our Chaos Res is capped, especially when you end up going Aegis variant, because otherwise you may potentially die to it, right? To go over our skill section, and then I'm going to jump into something kind of cool for you guys. We're going to go really fast through this. So at the moment, uh, we're sitting at about 1.7 million boss damage. Not that much, but the character is very tanky. And again, higher gear sets will have more damage, but this is focused on like league starting right now. Most players are not going to need crazy amounts of damage to just kill their map bosses and basic guardian content, right? And also as you gear up, you're going to get a lot more damage, right? This is focused on the earlier stages. So we've got standard 2020 gems in our body armor. You can see they're just regular 2020, 2020. Uh, Fire Trap is level 18, and the reason why is because of the nerfs to it. I could plus this up two levels, which gives us a lot of damage, but that's not accurate because Fire Trap did get nerfed. So this is going to go in your helmet, and in your body armor, you've got RF. Uh, our auras are going to be Determination, Malevolence, Skitterbot, Unbound, Ailment. These I typically put in gloves because I do plus one gems. Plus one doesn't affect um, a lot, like every single aura in the game, but that's typically just how I like to kind of put my auras. Um, for your Frostblink setup, which is usually how we curse, you've got Frostblink, Hextouch, Flammability, which is your bread and butter. If you have mana issues, don't forget to use a level one Frostblink. And remember that Combustion doesn't have to be here, but it is a really good tool to use for extra uh, boss damage. Otherwise, you could put Life Tap. Um, I've got Shield Charge. I like going Shield Charge, Faster Attacks, Life Tap. This is in my weapon one. Then over here, you've got Infernal Cry and Blood Rage. Infernal Cry, you will pretty much keep until you get your Legacy of Fury. They're your best way of clearing maps. Anytime you come across tanky targets, you pop your Infernal Cry and the pack pretty much explodes. Blood Rage is for your early Frenzy generation. And then I've got Molten Shell. So if you, you know, don't happen to use Blood Rage, you do have potentially one to two flexible gem sockets that you get to move around until the more nitty gritty endgame version. Now, let me go ahead and jump into a few defensive layers. I don't really think I talked about this last league, so I want to bring some importance into this. So at the moment, we don't have a crazy amount of life. We've got 4.7k life. We also have 1.2k life regen. Um, from here, without any flasks on, we have 30,000 armor. So if you don't tag all of your flasks, because when you're mapping, you'll probably have these on. We've got 43,000 armor, which is like an 8k plus bubble on your molten shell. We have 80 res, 78, 78, so not that high on res, but Dawnbreaker helps a bit with that, especially um, with converting cold, lightning, and physical to fire, and then at which case your ruby flask helps mitigate um, the fire damage that you're taking, right? Also, don't forget about Dawnbreaker's huge block chance, right? So from here, I also want to bring up the point that as an Inquisitor, right? As an Inquisitor, we are essentially immune to all curses, because Pious Path gives us 50% curse reduction, and then we get 50% increase effect of Pious Path, which then, if you pair it with a Mastery for Reduced Curse Effect, is 95% curse resist. So that means that you can run all pretty much all curses on all maps. You don't really have to worry about it. Ailment Immunity is covered if you are following the guide properly. You can get a source of critical damage reduction on your Armor Masteries, which helps a lot. You've got Corrupted Blood Immunity through your, uh, sorry, your, um, uh, whatever this thing is called here. Uh, I forgot what it's called. Resistance and Ailment Protection Mastery. There we go. And then the, just the massive abundance of Energy Shield, right? Or Energy Shield Regeneration. So we also have like a 400 ES buffer right now with uh, another 400 ES per second, which helps kind of survive a little bit of chip damage, right? And then the last thing I want to bring up is do not forget the new Gravicious mod on your chest piece. Instead of doing the Life is ES, we're going to have Physical and Lightning converted. Or sorry, Physical damage converted to fire and lightning. So this makes us even stronger against physical. So really the only problem in the very early game would be elemental and Dawnbreaker does assist with this. All right, um, so that's pretty much enough with that. Before I end the video, I want to actually go ahead and show you guys a little bit of examples of what the build is gonna feel like. Now, last league I did this as well. 
This league, it's not going to be as detailed as I'm just a little tired and didn't have the energy to make all the characters. So let's start with the beginning. So right at the start, here is a character level 18. All these characters are done on SSF. Their gear is complete crap, I promise you. So we are running right now with Combustion, Elemental Prolif, Rolling Magma. Uh, this is weapon one. It's made through a recipe. This is weapon two. It's also made through a recipe, right? So I'm going to just go pop in like Western Forest. And I'll give you an example of how the leveling is going to look like. Remember, if you don't enjoy this setup, you can always go back and use the old Frost Blink leveling setup. Essentially, you're going to throw your Magma Orb, which creates that Prolif, right? And then for extra single target, you're going to go ahead and slam your Flame Surge while targets are ignited. So you can also use like an extra button press here to use um, uh, Flame Wall, but I think this is personally enough. All right, so moving on a little bit further, we're gonna be on a 41 character. Uh, the importance of this character is we are dropping Rolling Magma because it's kind of annoying. And at level 28, we get Armageddon Brand. So I don't know if everything is perfect links, but everything has progressed very nicely for me. I'm using Ignite Prolif. If you don't have this at the time, you're just using Ellie Prolif. Combustion, Life Tap, and Armageddon Brand. Um, if you're having mana issues, consider using Life Tap over Combustion. But if you do that, you might want to grab an extra Ignite node to make sure the build feels good. And currently on my uh, Flame Surge, I am currently running... Um, where is my Flame Surge, actually? I'm running Immolate, Flame Surge, and Life Tap at the moment in a 3-link. So let me show you what this looks like. Now, this setup is also running Purity of Elements and Determination. So by this point, you are fully ailment immune and even have a nice chunk of armor. Uh, my gear is like really, really bad right now as I wanted to get the most realistic experience for you guys, but the build should feel pretty, pretty tanky at this point. Don't forget, you also have the ability to use flammability if you want some extra single target, um, mainly used for bosses. Also, when you're bossing, it's extra important to use the flammability because it adds an extra chance to ignite, which just makes it smoother for, you know, your progress. I don't know where I'm going, actually. Don't mind me, guys. I don't know how to run the campaign. Oh, another thing. At this stage, uh, your Frost Blink actually does pretty... Well, maybe not here, but a little bit earlier. In, like, the 30s or so, when you craft that recipe for spell damage or for flat damage, your Frost Blink actually hits hard enough to kill monsters, as you saw there. So you can actually put Onslaught on it, and you'll get consistent Onslaught, which is really nice. So now, going from this character, we're going to jump to a 56 character where this character just now ascended. Uh, so this character has Righteous Fire going. Pull up my skill tree. This part is a little wacky. I know you're supposed to go through here. Don't mind me, I was really tired. You just have to flick this to right over here. Uh, but this character is now officially running Righteous Fire. So I'm gonna go jump right over here. If we pull up the defenses, you can see we've got 76, 75, 75. Rocking 570 Energy Shield regen. We have virtually no regen on our gear. We have 3.2 on our gloves, 0 here, 7.2 on a ring, 0 here, 0 here, nothing here, nothing here, nothing here. So we and 1.7 there, right? We're still able to sustain Righteous Fire. So, once you have RF going, don't forget that you really want to make sure you have your Frost Blink linked. So my Frost Blink setup is Flammability, Hex Touch, and Frost Blink. This is important because it'll allow you to not feel like you have to constantly throw fire traps at every mob. So if a, pack is, if a pack of monsters is tanky, you just frost blink on top of them. So like, see this yellow beast here? Frost blink him and bam, he's dead, right? Just like that, magic. Of course, for the, the more tanky targets, you're gonna throw your fire traps as well. So this character right here is a very similar experience to how your early mapping is gonna go. Uh, I do not have an early mapping character, so I'm gonna bring a little bit of extra emphasis on this character. So whenever you encounter bigger packs, right? Like a big pack of, you know, blue flame sentinel arc nemesis mobs, the mobs that take a long time to kill. Uh, when we come down here with our build, we get call to arms, which makes the war cry instant. So by using infernal cry, you're gonna debuff all the mobs in an area. And then when they die, they will basically trigger an explosion, killing themselves, right? It will feel very clean for mapping and it will feel very clean for harvest. Then, 
at the pinnacle point, I'm gonna go on my level 100 SSF character to show you what basically you're gonna be chasing after if you wanna make your character a strong mapper. Now, for the sake of this, I, move, I removed an entire support gem from the character, so I'm currently running on a life tap, trap and mine, fire trap um, with my Immolate Conk Effect helmet, right? This character was from Last League, so it's really geared at level 100, but it is an SSF character, and for some reason my ping is 3000. So with that being said, I'm going to jump into a Guardian map to show you guys what you can expect from a more, much more endgame character. The reason you're going to see the clear is, is much faster is all thanks to the boot's Legacy of Fury. This is why I put a big emphasis on up being one of the first purchases you make. It makes clearing so much better for the build. It gives you damage. It's just really nice to build around. Oh, there's that weird lag that... Man, GG has been having all sorts of weird things. Let me just refresh this instance real fast. Alright, perfect. There we go. Now, I'm going to remove the Bottled Faith here because I don't want to pad any damage, right? I just want you guys to see what the consistent damage is like. Oh, is this a Divine Shrine? Oh, that would also be cheating. We don't use those. I do believe... Ooh, Poacher's Mark. Yuck. Poacher's Mark is increased fizz damage taken, right? That's rude. Oh, that's awful. Alright, Guardian's down. Now, if you want to see this character specifically, you can just pull up the POB Pox SSF Circle. Again, the gear is going to be a bit more unrealistic as it's a character I grinded all the way out to 100. But even on a character like this, RF still can do enough damage to feel like it can kill pinnacle bosses. RF is still in a pretty good spot. That's with, you know, missing an entire support gem. Remember that with the new league mechanic, we're going to be able to gamble accessories so you can get like, this one looks crazy, but the chaos multi doesn't do anything for my build, right? You could take like a plus one amulet with dot multi and you could try sacking it for like double mods, right? Uh, same thing with your rings. You could get dot multi rings with fire damage or dot multi rings in life and try to sack those to get double stats. So that's all awesome stuff. Also, this character, even after the nerfs, because I know Melding got nerfed, this character, because it was SSF, only has 86 res. In Trade League, you're going to have about 86 res now with the new Melding setup. Uh, unless, of course, you're chopping stuff for, you know, really min-maxing your character. So this is an even closer um, guesstimation at kind of what the defenses would be like. Um, yeah, that's pretty much about it. This one's also not running Defiance Banner, so. I hope that, you know, this helps you guys out. Uh, I hope that uh, I've provided enough content for you guys to be successful Righteous Fire players. Of course, if you have any questions down the line at any point in time, drop them in the comments, talk in the Discord, hit me up on the stream. I can just be busy from time to time, but there will always be people in the community who will be more than happy to help you, so don't be shy. That's about it, though, so... Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Remember, if you liked the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget you can catch me streaming live every day, but Mondays at twitch.tv slash box. Take care, everybody.